The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. Hello, Wolfpack! We're back! And today, we're going to talk about a special supernatural journey that teaches us how to appreciate our natural environment. Hey, hey, get back here! Stop looking up Star Wars porn! Okay, okay, tonight is Crypt TV's turn on our channel, with today's very special internet short attempting to make a spooky environmentalist horror story. That sounds... kind of stupid, but hey, I'll keep an open mind while exploring this short, since Crypt TV has had its unexpected hits from time to time even from some random concepts. Now, this horror short seems to have garnered mixed feelings from the horror fanbase. Lots of people love this tale of suspense, while quite a few others don't see it as anything all that special, or just flat out ignore it. It seems that Terra didn't reach the birch or look-see levels of epic, but I have found a lot of good stuff on this web series, so maybe it's more so underrated than bad. While Crypt TV preaching about the environment might not entice some people who just want to have fun, I'm certain it's not going to be a painful watch either. Since this show certainly knows how to have its grim amusement at the end of the night, a lot of our followers really wanted us to check this precise Crypt TV tale out. So it looks like the sun is finally shining upon it. What? That's my fancy way of saying that we're going to review it. Oh! What? <sighs> Let's stop wasting time and begin. Was this horror story secretly a hidden flower blooming underneath the dark side of the web? Or is it the biggest joke about being pro-environment since Jessica Cruz? Time to find out. This is our review on the mystifyingly murky madness of the Crypt TV tale of suspense, Tara. <laughs> So, our webisode opens up with some flowers turning red. That's peculiar. I guess Carol was just telling people to look at the flowers again. Look at the bunny, Lenny! The bunny! <laughs> that was the scene we were all thinking of, right? We actually open up at a secluded desert summer house. In the middle of as we meet our main characters, a painfully disconnected family consisting of an ominous yet quiet creepy child named Noah and his whiny aunt Rachel. She's a jerk! And that's about all the character for her. Rachel is pretty much a neglectful, judgmental shrew who's stuck reluctantly babysitting her creepy nephew for a week while her sister is off-screen doing something important. But she makes it very loud and clear that she couldn't care less about the kid, wanting nothing to do with him at all and passive-aggressively bitching about it. Alright, she's not abusive or evil or whatnot, but she is totally neglectful and thus unlikable. So you can all probably guess that she'll definitely survive this horror story. As for the boy... No, 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 we don't need that clip. He actually has a name. This is Noah. He's pretty much a normal, if not eerily silent kid who doesn't bond well with his auntie Rachel since he picks up on her very well-hidden disdain for him. 
and the short story seemingly sets him up like he'll be important for later. <laughs> They basically spend all of their screen time at odds with each other, as we see Noah acting annoying while cynical jerk Auntie Rachel loves wasting gallons of water and crying to her sister for pestering her about the status of her only son. Pfft, the nerve, right? Rachel constantly feels creeped out by the kid for acting so weird. But she usually ignores him, or just plain acts condescending towards him at every turn. Yeesh, I think the nostalgia critic is actually better at caring for kids than she is. Critic, I'm gonna hit you. Hey! You can't scream, it's no longer painful and stupid. Yes it is, this whole movie is! Shut up! But after leaving Lil Noah alone for the upteenth time, the child unlocks something magical, as we get this sweet, unnerving scene of something supernatural surrounding the boy, bringing something special into their lives. It's super effective! But our idiot Auntie Rachel fails to see it because moron. Oh, he also turns off the faucet, wasting all that water. Now, I know this small micro scene might not seem that big upon first glance, but if you can believe it or not, this kid turning off the sink scene is going to be vital to his side of the story arc for later. Yes, seriously. So you better remember this. We then cut to Rachel, making herself look hot for all those zero men in her life, but she soon spots a face in her water. <laughs> that's nothing. You should see the scary face in my old house. Ugh, that still haunts my nightmares. Speaking of body horror, we then get this particularly grisly scene where the water particles begin attacking Rachel. It's really dark and quite disturbing, since molecules and tiny liquid droplets, such as her spilled wine and even her own sweat, stab into her. Ouch! I give huge credit to the short flick for making the pain feel real enough to seem brutal. But then, it turns out to be some kind of mind screw scene, since it all just stops. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. She was just attacked by shape-shifting water droplets, yet her pain and the bleeding kind of abruptly halts, along with the stabbing, causing her to question what was real and what was fake. While this moment is pretty horrific, it kind of grows confusing upon rewatches, especially when we all know that most of Crypt TV's horror moments are always real after all. So, what was actually happening when she was in that bathroom attack? Was she really injured? Was it all a hallucination? Did the supernatural being heal her stab wounds? What happened? So, Rachel assumes that she's suffering from heat stroke and tells herself that she's not crazy, since that's clearly what a normal person would do, but guess who enters the scene to act ominous and creepy some more? Hmm, it sure is strange how that ominous Noah showed up right after that supernatural stuff occurred. Obviously, this means nothing. So, despite nearly getting herself stabbed and in a panic, Rachel, of course, acts like a jerk towards the kid, for no reason at all. This lady is so going to live through this horror story, right? Later that night, Rachel takes a dip in her hot tub to chillax since she really needs it, but we soon see that she's not alone.
Bah, I think Merrick played his humanoid slime card. Though, to be fair, I do actually enjoy the special effects in this short film. They are spectacular. The director and writer of this web film is actually a special effects artist who worked on such big hits like Pacific Rim, Smallville, and Narnia 2, which wouldn't you know, also had a scary humanoid water spirit. Coincidence? I think not. And to his credit, he's really improved his craft here, because these water effects are a true work of art to behold. This thing is splashing. They truly are phenomenal for an amateur web series, and hold up supremely well. Crypt TV's production values are honestly a thousand times better than most big budget horror flicks are today. Collar me impressed. And we all get to enjoy the glorious effects in this scene, along with some pretty ghastly horrors. The water monster dives away, but soon the water begins to boil Rachel alive before it goes in for the strike. Where? Are you ready for this? Because what I'm about to tell you guys really caught me off guard the first time I saw this and might really traumatize a few of you. What you're about to see is the most bizarre and brutal kill of a slasher story. So just know that you've been warned. The water monster strikes dummy head Rachel by flowing up her vagina and drowning her from the inside. Wow. Just, just wow. I can safely say that I didn't see that one coming. No joke, the water demon kills this lady by swimming up her vagina slash butthole and drowns her from within her own body, which floods her internal organs tears apart Rachel's hot body, and has her spraying water and blood everywhere like a Lowe's garden fountain. I suppose I should give Crypt TV bonus points for creativity, but jeez, is that a brutally nightmarish way to off your horror victims. Death by vagina infiltration. Wolf Entertainment. It's one thousand vagina joke. Oh my god! Your brand new cup of Supreme is waiting outside. Okay, 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 thank you. Um, wow, our one thousand vagina joke. Gosh, where do I start? Um, I guess I'd like to thank vaginas everywhere. They're creepy and I don't know what they're for, but boy, are they funny! So congrats, Crypt TV. You're the first horror story to ever do Death by Haunted Vagina, and somehow made it amazingly unsettling. It kind of works. I feel nauseated, disturbed, and horrified, but also kind of impressed with a unique slasher kill. So you have my approval. My Rule 34 bucket list is truly complete. Also, we can finally pull out this classic gem. You have to get out of here! Your vagina is haunted! <laughs> now that's what I call exposed to the elements! <laughs> hey, that's my bit! Oh, no, you didn't, girlfriend! <laughs> 
So, while Rachel becomes infected by the Flood, we see that Noah is out there too, simply enjoying the show. Yes, really. This kid gleefully witnesses his aunt dying horribly, and he's just standing out there laughing at it with his sippy cup in hand. I know that Rachel was kind of a neglectful crybaby, but holy cow, this kid is getting a little too much excitement out of watching her demise. I'd understand if she was a full-on abuser suffering this fate, but she kind of just felt creeped out by him this whole time and never really treated him like dirt at all. Yet he's still enjoying this like it was a front stage seat for the death of Joffrey. It just feels a bit too harsh. Then again, she did waste all that water, so the mega bitch gotta be put down, I guess. Now, a lot of you were probably like me and thought, Oh, so Noah had magic elemental powers this whole time and was using them for revengeance against his jerk aunt, right? Nope. It turns out that this was the big twist instead. Noah has nothing to do with the water demon whatsoever, and he was a red herring meant to throw us off track the entire time. We see that our real monster, the water demon, is in fact Terra, a nature spirit who protects Mother Earth from idiots who waste the natural resources which our planet provides for us, and Noah has no connection with her at all. We were tricked into thinking that the kid was Terra, but no, the magical molecules we kept seeing all throughout this episode were really Terra all along. What a twist! So, you're also probably wondering why was Noah acting creepy this whole time and is perfectly A-OK -okay with his short-term adult guardian getting brutally myrtleized by this ghost lady. I don't know. They never say why. He was just a red herring, and that's about it. This whole time, Noah was not acting creepy because he was secretly the super-powered monster. He was just acting creepy for the sake of acting creepy. Oh, sure, why not? That's kind of lame. I mean, come on, all that setup for the ominous kid, and it just builds up to him being a weirdo? That's a bigger waste than all of Rachel's water contraptions. Though it does make up for that, with some good dark comedy, as he laughs at her hilarious suffering. So, after drowning her for a few rounds, Tara eventually decides to finish her. Hooray! Tara murdered Aunt Bitch for wasting all that water, and sprinkles the dead lady's blood all over the flowers to help her babies flourish. See? It's that scene from earlier! It was Tara watering her plants with human blood to make amends for the stupid chick's massive waste of water for all her cheap materialistic human crap. It all came full circle! <laughs> what a story arc. Oh! I thought the bleeding flowers were metaphorical for a lady's period! The boy also laughs at this since he's Team Terra now, but we also see the reason why he never had that many lines in this flick. From ashes to ashes. Ugh, you know it's not a Crypt TV misadventure without at least some bad acting here and there. 
So Tara decides to spare the creepy child and holds no ill will towards him at all. Why? Because he turned off the faucet that was wasting all that water earlier, and that pleased the mother nature goddess Tara. Since unlike his idiot auntie, he cares about the environment. Yep, they're cool now. So remember kids, always be sure to conserve your water. It may save a life. I will admit that Terra is pretty dang cool, and this small moment does offer us some redeemable qualities in her mysterious character that most of the generic doomsday monsters never receive. It's good to see her as a noble demon among the Cryptverse monsters. I do like her. Oh, but despite being spared by the Mother Nature spirit and earning her approval, that doesn't stop the kid from still acting like a moron. Who are you? Ha, I love that. Are you going to hurt me? Only if you hurt me first. Okay, pokey pokey pokey! <laughs> I'm sure poking at an all-powerful nature demon is a good way not to piss it off. With her work here done, she departs in peace, leaving the lone child to fend for himself in the desert home and explain his aunt's death to mommy. We then get a painfully awful CGI pose of Terra literally watching over Mother Earth like she was a gritty anti-hero. It looks imposing at first and has some epic music to it, but the CGI just looks bad. I think Terra had a more beautiful appearance during all those night shots and darkly lit angles compared to her daytime scenes, since the darkness helped the CGI blend in flawlessly. This one here looks like a bad PlayStation 2 cutscene. I know it's only a few seconds long, but it's still long enough that it hurts the short by soiling the fear of your big scary horror monster with some fakeness. So, Terra watches over the world, but uh-oh, some douchey idiot tosses out his still-lit cigarette out onto her land, torching the innocent plants, forcing Terra to unleash her wrath once more. Yep, it ends with the saga continuing, and Terra becoming the human torch to burn a smoking moron for littering. Already she's a better human torch than Michael B. Jordan. Anywho, that was the end to Crypt TV's super duper save the environment special, Terra. What do I think of it? Well, it was pretty awesome. I really love this short film. It definitely has its flaws, such as building up Noah like he has shining powers, and making him out as a future serial killer who loves watching people die, but then never doing anything with that. And some of Tara's mind screws make very little sense when the twist reveals that she was real all along and behind it all the whole time but it does contain some unique horror ideas. A gruesome kill scene never done before is shot very well, has some awe-inspiring special effects, sans that one scene, has a nice setting that feels almost like a Courage episode, a simple enough plot, a darkly humorous Twilight Zone way of teaching people why you should cherish the environment and your responsibility for your family, shows off some talented creativity, and best of all, gives us a great horror creature. 
I love Tara, since she is super amazing, and she receives enough character to have a motivation behind her actions. Not to mention some moral high ground, as she grants mercy to a child, and overall wants to protect the Earth from harm, but also has a poison ivy method of doing things to make her as terrifying as possible. I would absolutely love to see her gain that masterful horror movie like all the Wicked Cryptverse ghouls should. Or at least a sequel webisode, since she does have the potential for more. Seeing her massacre toxic waste dumpers and polluting pricks in an R-rated Captain Planet style story arc sounds extremely riveting. The human characters are simple, but they don't ruin the short story for me at all. Rachel is a jerk, but she makes it clear that she's not a child-loving person, and her neglecting everything in life for shallow gain ultimately leads to her own downfall in the end. When Tara gets pissed at her for wasting her resources on useless crap, and Noah refuses to even consider rescuing her, since she treated him like a freak. So, there was an attempt at a lesson, as well as a comeuppance narrative through her. The entire story does have the typical, don't pollute message, we've all seen in most Save the Environment tales, which does feel a tad standard. But I personally think more emphasis is placed on a take responsibility for yourself moral. Since Rachel pays the price for neglecting both her wasteful lifestyle and a child in her care, basically making this a dark yet over-the-top cautionary tale. Almost in the same vein as R.L. Stein and Rod Serling's work, so I like the premise just fine. Noah felt a bit like a wasted character since he was pretty much just a red herring for the audience to mistake him for the horror monster. But his creepy child behavior kind of leaves more desired from him. He didn't hold the story back, but he kind of raises a few questions on his narrative purpose. But the true main selling point, Tara, was the greatest part in all of this. She certainly leaves a strong impression on you, and her horror scenes were spectacular. I definitely want to see more of her. And I do mean in that way. Oh, yeah. What? Nothing. Hopefully one day, we can all get that death battle between Terra and Poison Ivy. Who is the true badass Mother Nature? She's pretty boss. The worst elements of this story are some bad line reads from Noah when he starts talking, and a single sketchy CGI shot that might make you laugh rather than fear our Lady of War here. However, this short story has a lot to love and a lot to scare you, showing that Crypt TV really knows how to make it rain. So, I grant this webisode a gold skull. It was certainly an amazing horror short with an incredible supernatural avatar monster blowing your mind, both metaphorically and literally. I strongly recommend Terra if you want to see Crypt TV at their most creative, since the Mother Nature Spirit of Vengeance gimmick certainly feels fresh and enthralling in this one. I actually love this tale. How can anyone not enjoy a shape-shifting elemental anti-hero with a heart of gold? Now, it's not exactly at the same level as the Birch, or Luxy or Soot are, but the production is competent enough to make you consider Terra as an A-lister horror monster worthy of being in their league too. Again, the weak elements are the bad child acting and some CGI blunders, but those are just small nitpicks to an otherwise skilled horror short. While Terra might not be this ultra-deep, totally life-changing journey, it is simply an interesting tale of suspense showcasing the grand powers of Mother Nature. While some people might dismiss it as nothing too special, 
The nice horror style here does prove that nature always wins. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, or just tune in for more videos posted here on Wolf Entertainment. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I hope you all remember to conserve your energy for the environment's sake. Otherwise, elemental beings will violate you sexually before killing you. See you all next time!